All right, let's go ahead and get started then. So now we've learned about electromagnetic waves and we've seen that those are what we call light. And so now we're gonna talk about what happens when electromagnetic waves travel through space and when they interact with different what we call mediums. So that field is called optics. And so this talks about the way that light travels and then with special emphasis on traveling through different mediums. And by this, I just mean like different materials. So this could be light traveling through air or light traveling through a vacuum or light traveling through water. And we'll see in a moment that depending on what it's traveling through, light might behave a little bit differently. And the reason we're learning about this is because we saw that light is electromagnetic. And so when you hear the word optics, what kind of things do you guys think about? Yeah. What was that? Water. 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 Okay. Think about like eyeglasses and stuff, optometrists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are all things that are related to optics. So we'll try to explain those things using physics. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is reflection. And so in this class, we'll define uh, mirrors as objects that create reflections. And so if we have down here some mirror, and you have an electromagnetic wave, and we call, if we draw the light traveling in a straight line like this, this is a array. And if the light ray hits the mirror at some angle theta, then it's going to be reflected back at some at that same angle theta. Okay. 
So the arrows are showing the direction of travel of the light and the, this dotted line is the, uh, so this dotted line is perpendicular. to the surface or to the reflective surface. And it's important to note that the way that we measure angles when we're talking about reflection is with respect to that perpendicular line. So usually if you're given an angle, it's given with respect to this perpendicular dotted line and not with respect to the surface of the mirror. So theta, like I have it drawn, is measured from the perpendicular, not from the mirror. We call the, the incoming light ray, another word for that is incident and then here you would have outgoing or reflected So here's like a close up of a mirror. So if this is just some flat surface, if I were to zoom in really closely on this area, then obviously the surface might not be completely flat. But in order for a mirror to be good at reflecting light, the like the size of the I guess we'll call it the roughness maybe. Must be smaller than the wavelength of the incoming light. In order, in order to be a but if the incoming wavelength is like this, then even though the surface might not be completely smooth, as long as the wavelength of the light is bigger than the roughness, then it can still be reflected away. But if the incoming wavelength down here was like, Maybe I'll draw this a little more jagged. So this wavelength is pretty big. So this would be the wavelength and the. So as long as my kind of surface deviations are smaller than 
that lambda, then this thing could still be reflected. If my wavelength is much smaller, now, so this red one could be reflected, but this blue one would not be reflected. So if you think about like the mirror in your bathroom, that's smooth enough so that visible wavelength light can be reflected, but something that has a shorter wavelength, like maybe ultraviolet or x-rays might not be reflected by that surface. Now we're gonna stick with reflections and we're gonna talk about images. So this black line is going to be a mirror. And we're gonna have a person who's standing like this, facing the mirror. Maybe. So we're looking at this from the side. So the person. Let's say their eye is up here. So in order for you to see something, light from that thing has to reach your eyeball. So if you're looking at the mirror, that's not the mirror. Maybe I'll just move the mirror closer. That's pretty good. So remember the angle of reflection has to be the same as the angle of the incident beam. And then if we do the same kind of thing for the foot. We would have some other angle, it's called theta two, but it has to originate from the part of your body that you're seeing and it has to end up going into your eyeball in order for you to see it. So everything over here, so this is like the real world. And then if we trace this 
body part over. So I'm it's going that way, that and that's going that way. So if I take the reflected ray and then I just keep going in a straight line on the mirror side of things, then what you would see on the mirror side is just a mirror image, something like that. And it would be the same size as the image on the other side. And so obviously the real world thing is like, you know what that is. And then on the other side is called an image. So if you think about looking at a mirror, you see something that appears to be behind the mirror, right? So what you're seeing is your brain projecting backwards this incoming, so for example, this light ray is being projected over here and then you're seeing that image behind the mirror. Does that make sense? Yes, okay, kind of. So this thing that I'm doing where I'm taking whatever the, the light ray is doing in the real world and then drawing it on the opposite side of the mirror is called ray tracing. So what you're doing is you take the, take the reflected light ray draw, or I guess draw. So you take the reflected light ray and on the mirror side, so this is the mirror side. Continue the reflected light ray So again, it's the same for the red line. So I'm taking the reflected light ray, which is this one. And then if you just were to continue drawing that line on the opposite side at the same angle and everything, you would get this red dotted line down here. Okay. Uh, so we'll we'll come to something that maybe you guys have seen before. So when we say that something has a color, what we mean, so if I say this object is red, 
what I mean is that red light bounces or reflects off of that object and my eye detects red light. And red light is a certain wavelength of light and our eyes are have evolved to detect that wavelength of light. So everything that you're seeing that has a color is reflecting. So it's maybe not a mirror, but it has a, an appropriate smoothness such that that wavelength of light is gonna bounce off of it and let you see it as that color. And so the same thing applies. If your shirt is blue, then it's variations in its surface uh, like material are such that red or blue light is going to be reflected by that material. So then the next thing that we're gonna talk about is refraction. So the easiest example that I was looking for was if you have something in water and let's say you had like a pencil, it'll look like the pencil gets bent at the surface of the water, right? And then when you take it out, you're like, wait, that's not bent, it's still straight. So this is refraction. So this is a consequence of uh, light traveling through different mediums and specifically um, so the speed of light depends on the medium that it is traveling through. So this speed of light C, three times 10 to the eight, this is the speed of light in vacuum, or if there's no, there's nothing that it's traveling through. When light travels through air or water or other materials, the speed of light is slower. So what's happening with this refraction is that the speed of light through the air is slightly faster than the speed of light through the water. And so the we're, that's causing the, uh, the image of the object that we're seeing to be slightly distorted. And the equation that governs that is this one. This is called Snell's law. The lowercase n is the index of refraction. And then theta is uh, just an angle measured in the same way that we measured the angle of refraction, uh, reflection. And so this index of refraction is tied to the speed of light in that medium.
So light ha or, uh, air has an index of refraction, water has a different index of refraction and so on. Tied to the speed of light in a specific medium. So uh, the person who came up with this law didn't know that light had, they didn't know how light worked. They just did all of this like through experiment. So they didn't know that the speed of light changed in different mediums and stuff. They just saw that when I use different mediums, I get this thing called refraction. And so the measurement that they gave was called the index of refraction. And then later on, when we learned more about how light works, then we realized, oh, these, this index of refraction is tied to the speed of light in these different mediums. So uh, a way that you can think about the index of refraction is a ratio between the speed of light and vacuum. Maybe I'll just do it in words. Speed of light in vacuum and speed of light in medium. And so n always has to be greater than or equal to one because the speed of light in vacuum is faster than, is the fastest speed that you can have. 